Hey everybody, Jeremy here with the Practical IT Channel. Today we're going to take an early look at what is going to become Ubuntu 23.04. This is a daily release and anything you see here is subject to change before the final release in April. Let's get started. Okay, we are here on a fresh Firefox tab and we're gonna search Ubuntu 23.04 download. And first hit is right here. Okay, and since people want full coverage, we are going to copy the Lunar Desktop AMD 64 ISO. Copy link. We're gonna come over here to Proxmox Host 2. And Oops, there we go. On the VM store drive, we're gonna go download from URL and we're gonna paste in the ISO path. We're gonna query the URL. It's gonna come up with our ISO file name. We're gonna go one step further. We're gonna go SHA-256. We'll come back over to the Ubuntu page and we're gonna to go to SHA-256 sums. We'll copy the top one for the AMD64. And bring this back over here. And we're gonna paste it in. And download. And that's gonna do its thing. Over here on my other Proxmox instance, I've done the same thing earlier. We have the ISO image under PVE01 store, which is my storage drive. And we're gonna create a new VM. Create VM. And we're gonna say Ubuntu Lunar Daily OS. We are going to select Lunar Desktop System. We'll leave this alone disks. We're going to put it on the proper drive and we'll give it 40 gigs. SSD emulation because it is an SSD. CPU cores, we're going to give this six cores. Memory, we'll give it six gigs of RAM. Overkill for a VM, I know, but we'll give it a decent amount of resources nonetheless. Confirm, start after created, finish. So we've got our VM already starting and we are going to use the first option, try or install Ubuntu. And in a moment or two, this will start up and we will start working through our installer. Okay, we're gonna go with the option install Ubuntu. But before we start that, I just wanna take a moment and say, if you are installing on physical hardware, which I don't recommend for a pre-release, but if you are going to do this on physical hardware, try it before you install it. And the reason I say this is because you wanna make sure everything is working. For instance, if you're using a laptop, you wanna make sure the Wi-Fi activates properly. So with that note in mind, we're gonna continue on and install Ubuntu. Keyboard layout, defaults are fine, English US. We are going to install third-party software as we go, continue. Race disk is fine, it's a blank VM disk. Continue, time zone, New York is fine for me. Select the proper one for your location. And enter user data.
All right, after a little bit of a hiccup, we are ready to resume and restart our machine. Say restart. And we'll remove the virtual ISO image. And hit enter to restart the VM. Couple of odd error messages there, but nothing we can't work around. And let's take a look at our gear down here. By default, we are going to be running Wayland. If you want to use Xorg, for instance, if you need to use a remote uh, support software of some variety, you will most likely want to be on the Xorg option. So we're going to go ahead and do the Wayland version and get logged in. All right, and we've got our normal wizard. We are just going to skip, not send information to Canonical. Since it's a VM, leave location services off, and done. So, of course, the first thing we want to do is open a terminal and make sure we're up to date. While we're waiting for updates to happen, we can take a look at settings. We come down to about. And as you can see, we are running GNOME version 43.1 on Wayland using KVM virtualization. And we've got eight gigs of RAM and a 53.7 gigabyte disk capacity. And of course you could go through and play with other options as desired. For instance, we'll come into appearance and change it to dark mode. And we'll select this wallpaper. And then for Ubuntu desktop, there are a couple of options here. Dock is on the left side. Dock behavior, include mounted volumes and network volumes, show the trash. That's good. And we're going to turn off the personal folder that appears on the desktop. We'll minimize this for the moment. And our desktop is uh, is clear of the home folder. So taking a look, the file manager is not changed a whole awful lot. If we go to about files, it is version 43.1. Take a look at LibreOffice, see what version we've got. This is version 7.4.3.2. I'd imagine potentially by the time this ships in April, 7.5 may very well be included. We've got Mozilla Thunderbird. This is version 102.6 which is great. And Firefox is currently sitting at version 107.0.1. So we are looking pretty good on the basics and we are just waiting for updates to finish up. And I'll be back in just a minute or two when that's done. All right, so the updates have finished. We'll go ahead and clear our terminal. And we'll check the kernel version. And currently this is still running a 5.19 kernel. By the time this comes out, it's 
likely going to be running a 6.0 or 6.1 kernel. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, HTOP is not installed. NeoFetch is not installed. So let's go ahead and install those now. Enter the password. And NeoFetch. Keep in mind that this is a development version. Again, I want to make the disclaimer, do not run this on a physical machine or at least not as your daily driver until the full release or at least a release candidate. There are going to be changes between now and then. And HTOP, it's using just under a gig of RAM out of the eight gigs I gave it, minus the RAM that's allocated for video. All right, so let's close the terminal. Everything else looks pretty much the same as the 22.10 release, which I would still sort of expect at this point especially coming right off the holidays. That will wrap up our first look at Ubuntu 23.04 development. Once we get to the release candidate stage, I will likely take another look at this and be able to compare back to this video and see what has changed. And on that note, I will thank you all for watching. You know what to do down in the section below the video. Like, subscribe, and if you feel like supporting the channel, consider becoming a member. There will be member-only videos and member-only live streams ramping up towards the end of January. And on that note, thank you once again, and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.